Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Mighty Joe, man, how you doing? Pretty good, Jared. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, football, you know, uh, it's getting down to uh, we're going to see what's what this season. You know, what this season is, is actually going to be, how it's going to be defined. Basketball cranking up. You know, going to have some big games coming up on the horizon. So it's a good time to be a, a Red Raiders, you know, sports fan. All right. First question, though, comes from Mr. Mustafa Mon wants to know uh, basketball forecast. He says, uh, conference opener, who's the starting five and the six man? And then he also wants the Big 12 tournament starting five and six man. I guess he's saying who, do, who he thinks is going to end up being right. the in the starting five. Yeah, um, may seem like I'm taking the easy way out. Maybe I am. Uh, but I, I think the, the current starting lineup, is, is working well, you know. I mean, Tech is jumping on people right now. Yeah. There's not any issues with coming out slow, at least right now against weak opposition. So that's Culver, Moretti, Mooney, Odiase, and Owens. Right. All right, and I, and I think that's a perfectly good starting lineup, and it's likely to remain that way, you know, for the foreseeable future. Uh, who knows what happens way on down the line, but right now that's, that's who I would go with. Now, I would caution just one thing, however. Um, Texas Tech has looked very good with one big and four smaller guys out there on occasion. Mm, yeah. Okay, so if Tech struggles at some point, loses some games they shouldn't, maybe they're, they're starting games slow, uh, something like that, then maybe he, Chris Beard wants to make a switch. You might see maybe Owens come out of the starting lineup and Corpru go in for him. You think uh, Owens instead of Odiasi would come out? So, yeah, and, and the reason I would say that is because, uh, he, to me, he's kind of an energy guy. Okay. I mean, he's a he's a guy that uh, you know if teams haven't played against him, uh, you bring in that guy to come off the bench, and it's going to shock some people a little bit with yeah. with what he can do out there, and so I, I think that that's at least a possibility. Uh, so I mean, and, and Corpru is a guy who's just been very very efficient. Yeah. You know, he hasn't played huge minutes, but man, when he's in there, he's he's scratching. You know, I yeah. mean, he's he's rebounding, he's scoring. A really good-looking shooter, which I didn't realize he had a stroke like that. Uh, but uh, man, uh, and then Chris Beard's pleased with him too. Uh, so that would probably be my sixth man uh, on down the line if he's not in the starting lineup at some point. Let me ask you this: I mean, my question would be, and I, this is a good question about the starting and when they start, you know. But who finishes games? And big, who finishes Big 12 games? If you had five guys on the court, because mine would be I, I love Norris Odiasi, but he's not on the court uh, at that. Point. It's Owens. It's probably uh, either Edwards, Francis, or Corpru, and then with the other got the starters: Mooney, Moretti, Culver, of course. That that's my that's who I it, when it's winning time. That's who I have out there. What about you? Boy, you know that, that's that's a tough question uh, because you know it's 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 like. You know, every game is different. Sure. You know, and, and it's it's kind of like who's Depends playing well, who your yeah. the matchups, and, and which group is playing you know best with one another and so forth. Sure. I mean, you got to have Culver out there. Right. You know, that's that's that's. And your, Mooney, I think at this point, I think he's established well, himself. So, yeah, I mean, Maybe he's even Moretti too. I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so if you go with those guys, uh, the three starting guards that you have right now, then. Your other positions are the ones where you're going to have a little bit of flexibility. The big, big or small or athletic or defense or offense or yeah, exactly. you have some, some, uh, some things to work with. Sure do, sure do, and and it depends on whether Francis shows up or not. That's true. you know, I mean, sometimes he does, and you can't, you don't want to take him out. Other times he plays seven minutes like he did this last game. So, uh, it's going to be an interesting team to watch. A lot of pieces, a lot of different uh, ways to fix the puzzle. Absolutely. Another basketball question. This one's from Red Raiders. He wants to know, Kansas aside, who do you see as uh, two through four in the Big 12? Uh, you know, I'm sticking with uh, K-State as number two. Um, uh, they're, they're not a team that has, is going to blow anybody out because they just don't have the offensive punch. But they're just so very solid across yeah. the board and experienced. Um, well coached. Well, yeah, and they're just going to be a hard team to beat. You know, they don't scare you. But but they worry you, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So uh, they're they're number two for me. And I gotta say, I hate to say this, but uh, Iowa State is my number three right now. They've really jumped up, a lot more impressive than I thought they were gonna be. Uh, and I mean, they don't even have Wigington. I was about to say he's injured. Yeah. And then they got the two suspended guys, Zoran Talley and Cameron Lard, who are major contributors. Yeah. Lard may be the most talented guy on the team outside of Wigington. Right. You know, they're suspended for the foreseeable future. But even without those guys, they are looking pretty doggone stout. So if they come back, wow. win, then, then look out for Iowa State. Okay. okay, so that's my number three team. And I'm, I'm sticking with Tech at number four. 
uh, uh, which is where I had them before. And then, you know, West Virginia, who knows where they're going to slot in. Yeah. I, they're struggling a little bit right now, uh, but uh, that's, that's my top four. Good stuff. All right, another basketball question. Juicebox wants to know what has impressed you the most from the two uh, games so far with the fighting beards? Yeah, uh, you know, actually it's depth. Uh, because, I mean, every team in the Big 12 has a pretty doggone good starting lineup, okay? But a lot of these teams, for whatever reason, really, really drop off when they got to go to the bench. I mean, some of them barely even have a serviceable six man. And some of that is because of the stuff that we just talked about, suspensions, injuries, blah, 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 and that will change over time. But Texas Tech right now, one through nine. Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, you got guys, you got your starting lineup, but then you can come in with guys like Edwards, Corpru, Ondigo is showing up, yeah. you know, and uh, there's another guy missing the, another fourth. Francis. Francis, yeah. Brandon Francis. That's nine quality guys. And, you know, I mean, I'm even kind of impressed with the, with the walk-ons. Yeah. You know, I mean, Avery Bradley, it's, yeah, and, Hicks, and Parker, Hicks, Parker Hicks. I like Parker Hicks. I mean, that's Andrew a guy. Sorrell. Andrew Sorrells can really stroke it, and uh, those guys get in there. And if you have to, for whatever reason, go that deep into your bench, then uh, there are worse guys to bring in than those guys. So, uh, just a really, really deep team. And then what happens when Kevon Moore yeah. comes back? If he does, we hope so. Uh, and then maybe Kevin McCuller. Who knows what his situation is? Yeah. And the depth just becomes insane. So that's that's what really impressed me. Yeah, and to add to that, they're unselfish play together with all that depth. Oh, yeah. You know, because guys are, are competing for minutes, but they're still you know moving the ball, sharing the ball. Like you said uh, um, in the in the basketball story, Matt Mooney really. I mean, he's bypassed a lot of open shots. I mean, to get other guys involved. So it's been a really unselfish team and fun to watch so far. Quasimodo wants to know with all the talk about firing or retaining Cliff, is there anything about the team that gets lost? Is there is there something you want to talk about but haven't had the chance to yet? We've talked to, to yeah. the point of exhaustion, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know. I mean, I, I, the one thing that, that bothers me a little bit is that, you know, when are we going to have a special season again? Yeah. You know, I mean, even if you went out, uh, it's it's an okay season, probably better than most people expected, but right. it's still nothing that rocks anybody's world. Oh yeah, nobody you know? in the even the regional is going to be like, oh look what look what they did this year. A absolutely. I know, I know, and so. I mean, is it too much to like have one really great season every 10 years, you know? So that's 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 the thing that just disappoints me the most. And, um, you know, I, I guess I've got that to say anyway. I guess you can call me a moral victory guy, but I, I'll be honest, um, I've covered a lot of teams that give up with, with I guess, uh, a season like this, the give up factor would be really high, including here uh, at Texas Tech. And these guys have, uh, and I really give, I mean, the coaching staff credit for that, absolutely. These players want to play for this coaching staff. They play hard for them, and they play hard for each other. It's, it's obvious that these guys are it's a close group, um, and that has stood out to me. How I you know, wish it would translate into more wins for them, most especially, um, but uh, they are close. They are uh, tough guys. They are guys who play hard, and that's commendable. It really is. I think I'm not saying that that's worth noting over wins and losses because that's the bottom line is the results, but it would I would be – it would be a mistake to not at least mention that that, that has occurred, that, the, that this group is like that. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. And I don't want to, what I said earlier to be reflect negatively on the yeah. current team. My comment was more just the overall oh, sure, program, yeah. you know, uh, is what I was talking absolutely. about more than anything. And, uh, but yeah, hats off to these guys. I mean, they're, they're better than they've been for a while. Yeah. Uh, I think this, from a character standpoint, they're absolutely. clearly the best team that Kingsbury has had, maybe the best since Leach. You know, in terms of, of that guys. being yeah. yeah knit together and everything, so yeah, I agree with that. Okie okay, Raider 01 wants to know if Tech wins the remaining two games and Kingsbury is retained, is there any chance that Gibbs is let go, or is Kingsbury dead set on continuity, even if uh, it is poor performing continuity as the defense is currently 111th in total defense? Joe, I don't know if I even have an opinion on this. Honestly, <laughs> you know, what I mean, I, not that it's a bad question. It's not. Yeah, yeah. I just. The hiring, firing, I mean, I get asked that constantly by fans, other media members, other people in the program, what do I think, you know? And I, I don't know, I obviously don't know how, how it's gonna shake out. Um, and I don't know about Gibbs either. I, I guess my question would be kind of off of this is, Joe, do you think the defense has shown improvement this year? Do, well, you, think, do you think he should be back? Forget if he's going to or not. Do you hope Gibbs is back? You know, if it came right down to it, 
I, I, I'd probably give him another year, yeah. another another single year. I mean, you showed real improvement last year. Uh, I think you could say maybe you took a little bit of a step back again this year. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, I mean, is, they're trending down right now a little bit on right. defense, and that's a function of who they're playing too. I, now. I, that's what I think too. You know, I mean, Iowa State, Oklahoma, and Texas. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> that's very, that's very tough, tough yeah. you know. But at some point, I mean, if you're going to win the Big 12 or even contend for it, you're going to have to be able to do better against the, the good teams in the conference. Yeah. You know, so it's uh, I, I would probably give him one more year because, I mean, up, down, let's see if there's another bounce, and then uh, maybe we start moving regularly upward on defense. So I, I, I think I would give him another year. Yeah. And to answer your question, I think if Kingsbury, Kingsbury comes back, he absolutely wants Gibbs to come back. If Gibbs wants to come back, I don't know. I, and I agree with Joe. I would like to see one more year of what this defense can become um, with Gibbs and, and the staff in Tech. Midnight54 wants to know, how does Tech keep fans interested at games? Strip show with pole dancers, giveaway puppies, monkeys riding collies. I'd actually like to see that, monkeys. <laughs> That's always entertaining. Uh, what, what, what would you do? From, to me, it's just they got to win. That's what it is. I mean, you win, uh, I mean, not be close, not be competitive, like they've been competitive and people still left. Because you, you talk to fans, and they still say, well, we still didn't think they were going to win. You know what I mean? Because they haven't. I mean, two and ten at home over the last three years against Big 12 opponents. Only two wins were Kansas. It's just hard to defend. It's hard to get after the fans for leaving when that's what they've seen for three seasons, Joe. Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, this is a big topic of, of conversation, obviously. Uh, and, you know, everybody's got a different reason yeah. for, for why their, their pet reason. And yours is one of them, and it's a good one. Uh, you know, Zach Tanner weighed in with some, uh, you know, laid a little sociology on us and some yeah, yeah. generational stuff. And I think he has a point. I, I think that's too. part of it, too. I do too. Uh, and then with me, you know, I, I, what I've focused on a little bit is, is the atmosphere. You know, it's, it's not necessarily a case of trying to entertain people all the time, but just don't assault them yeah. all the time. I mean, not everybody in the stands is 18 years it old. Needs to be constantly entertained. Yeah, 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 and then just be just blasted with with noise of various sorts at all times, and have the the you know announcer bellowing and carrying on over the <laughs> most minor thing. You know, this is just silly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've got a feeling that it's that it's wearing on people. Yeah, and it's beating some people all down. All of it you combined, know? I think. I think it, I don't think it's one thing. No, no. I think it's a confluence of all these things that we're saying. Exactly. I mean, anything that that, that is this complicated has a bunch of different yeah. reasons and explanations for what's going on, and I think that's three of them. TV being a part of it too, all that constant ads mm. too. I mean, nobody likes that, you know. But that's not going away. That's not ever going to change. That's here to stay, um, because there's the money involved, and you, I'm not criticize anybody it's just a point of fact you talk to a lot of people they get beat down with all the ads and then all the the uh reviews the constant reviews to and penalties it just drags on to where it gets it becomes what used to be what you enjoyed to get away from uh, you know the noise the, the noise of your of your real life now has become kind of tedious you know, like it's a job to be a fan. It's your job to be there, whether you we torture you or not. And that's not true. That's not how fandom is supposed to be. No, no, yeah, it's tedious, but it's also it's kind of stressful. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, nobody right. wants to be constantly frustrated and exasperated. And that's the way I find myself a lot of time when I'm watching these games. Is a, yeah, not I'm just Texas fan. Tech either. Yeah, to be clear. No, no, it's just the way college football is. And I mean, that's not enjoyable. Yeah. You know, when you're constantly furious about this or that or why are they doing this or why is there this huge review that's going on forever why don't the officials know what they're doing why do they have to have these conferences uh, right. you know it's just it, that, that's that's not my idea of a good time and I don't think it is for just about anybody I agree Joe I think there's some changes that some of these can be corrected now the advertisements that is what it is but some of these can be corrected and I think hopefully college football as a whole will start moving towards some of those corrections but because it's obviously a sport you know we, we love but Joe great stuff from you as always great questions from y'all and until next time